What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for watching another video. We're going to be doing stuff a little bit differently today. I'm going to be talking about the easiest ways to make 500 wheel horsepower in your MQB car. So that'll include your GTI, your Golf R, Audi S3, Audi A3, any MQB platform car that you have. We're going to be talking about the easiest way to make power. So I'm going to be going over a list of mods that you have to do. Nothing extra, just the mods that need to be done to get you over that power threshold. So let's get right into it. Since I'm not with my car right now, I'm going to overlay a lot of pictures in my video just to show you the different parts that I'm running and the stuff that I recommend. So you see stuff popping up on the screen left and right so that you can see basically which part I'm talking about and just to have an idea of what parts that I have in my car and what parts I'm recommending to you guys. So I'm going to be starting with the most important mod that you need to do if you're going to make good power in these cars and that's your fuel setup. Having the proper fuel setup is going to make things very easy for you to make a lot of power and if you want to go build motor or go another path to make even more power after that, you having the proper fuel system will easily allow you to make as much power as you can in this platform. Now. Picking out the proper fuel system is the most important thing. Like I said before, it's even more important than choosing your turbo setup. If you don't have the proper fuel to be able to actually supply the turbo and your entire setup on your car, you will not make any sort of power. You could pick the best hybrid turbo out on the market. And if you don't have the proper fuel system to support that turbo, you're not going to make any sort of power. For me, the best and easiest way to make the most power possible is by going with an MPI kit, which is also known as a multi-port injection kit and an RS3 style low pressure fuel pump. That is the best way to do this in my opinion. There are a lot of people that choose to go different routes. Uh, they'll get different low pressure fuel pumps. They'll get just a high pressure fuel pump upgrade and that's fine. You'll make decent power doing that, but you're limiting yourself fuel wise and you also run the risk of running possibly lean if your system isn't supplying enough fuel for the setup that you're running. So my current setup on my Audi S3 is the EQT RS3 style low pressure fuel pump and I'm running the CTS Turbo MPI kit. Both have been doing really well so far. Uh, I'm in my tuning process as we speak and I've had no issues whatsoever. Uh, Matt from EQT has also told me that the car is running flawlessly, no knock, nothing at all going wrong. The car is making a lot of power, the car is very fast and I'm loving the setup so far and I have more than enough fuel system in the car to be able to make like 500, mid 500 horsepower on E85. Many different companies make MPI kits for these cars. Like I said, I'm running the CTS Turbo MPI kit. They gave me a good deal, shout out to CTS. That's the reason why I'm running their kit and I've had very good luck in the past running their products. Another very popular MPI kit is the PR Precision Raceworks MPI kit. That's a very popular one, very good quality, really good brand. A2B Motorsports makes an MPI kit for these cars as well. That's another very popular kit that people run. So there are options out there for you guys to choose. And to be honest, let's say you are gonna go with the high pressure fuel pump upgrade. If you just go with the internal, it's like $400, but you run the risk of possibly installing it incorrectly, getting a little bit of dirt inside of it, so it's not gonna be sending enough fuel pressure to the system, which could cause a lot of problems like fuel cuts, or if you get a pre-assembled pump, you're already spending almost $800 anyways. You're looking to spend on an MPI kit like $800 to $900, depending what kind of size injector you get. Most likely, you're going to be running a 925 or 980 cc, which is overkill. Some people might want the extra threshold of fuel and get a 1300 cc kit, but I don't think that's necessary on a stock engine application like what I'm running and what most people run out there. But just having the difference of a high pressure fuel pump, a full assembled pump to an MPI kit, to me, it just makes more sense. You're spending about the same amount of money and you're going to be 100% way better down the line on fuel than you would be if you're just running a regular high pressure fuel pump. I'm also running the EQT RS3 style low pressure fuel pump. It's an amazing pump. You don't have to do any wiring. It's just plug and play. Super easy installation. All you have to do is ground the wire and then you got to just change the amp uh, to a 20 amp on your... Uh, fuel pump and that's pretty much it. Other companies and other brands, depending on what you get, you have to do wiring, you gotta splice into things, it uses different controllers. There's just so many more things to go wrong. This is just a plug and play kit. You take the fuel pump, you put it in the car, you attach everything up and you're good to go. Uh, EQT makes a really good pump. A2B has a good RS3 style uh, low pressure fuel pump as well and you don't really have to worry about anything else. So that's the number one thing in my opinion that's the most important to make power in these cars 
is having the proper fuel system set up in your car. Second is probably what everybody wants to hear and it's the turbo that you choose to make the power. Now there are so many different companies that make turbos for this platform. I'm personally running the Vortex XL. It's an amazing hybrid turbo. It's arguably the best hybrid turbo on the market for this platform. But there are so many other companies that also make turbos for this platform such as TPC. That's another huge company. They're I would say the most in competition with EQT with their turbos. Uh, CTS also makes some hybrid turbos as well that are pretty affordable and they've done really well. Uh, Mamba Tech is another company. So you got to do your research and look at their dynographs, talk to the customer service of these companies to know what you're getting yourself into when choosing the proper turbo and the application that you want. Now, choosing the proper turbo all depends on how you want your car to respond, how you want your car to drive. Uh, the drivability is one of the most important things on what you're looking for. The reason why I went Vortex XL is because I wanted the best quarter mile times that I could do. I wanted the car to be easy to drive around town. I wasn't really too concerned about having later spool like then my IS38 or going with the regular Vortex standard. Uh, I just wanted the car to be really fast and I wanted the car to have a top end that doesn't fall off at all. Now that doesn't mean that other turbos cannot make that same kind of power. The Vortex standard on full E85 with MPI and all the proper fueling mods will make about 500 wheel horsepower without an issue. The Vortex XL you'll probably get anywhere between on a full like really aggressive map maybe 550 wheel horsepower, maybe even a little bit more. So you do have a good amount of power to be had only for an extra like $100. So to me, it's worth it going to an XL if you're trying to make the most power as possible. Now, like I said before, there are other companies that make hybrid turbos. TPC is another big company, like I mentioned before, that does make hybrid turbos. Uh, I know one of their popular ones is the TPC 38, the TPC 25, the TPC 20. They're all in competition with the Vortex stuff. And again, I did look at those turbos before I decided to go Vortex, but uh, a couple of people that I did talk to that have ran both actually, or from people that install them and run them, they said that the Vortex XL makes the same, maybe even a little bit more power and it spools up quicker than let's say a TPC 38. So just do your research on the turbo that you want to choose, but choosing the correct turbo for the application that you're going to be running is one of the most important things out there possible. And like I said, I wanted to choose the best turbo for what I wanted to do. And the Vortex XL ultimately was the best one. But like I said, guys, do your research. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments. Turbo wise, I'll try to answer them as best as I can. Mod number three, that is super important and that these cars suffer from if you do not replace this part are the intercoolers. You need to choose a really good intercooler for these cars to keep your IATs down. These cars with the stock factory intercooler have really bad problems with heat soak. And if not enough air is getting through the system, the problem that's going to happen is you're going to heat soak. You're not going to make enough power and that's going to really hinder the performance of your car. Currently I'm running the APR stock location intercooler that does a great job, but there are other companies that make really good intercoolers as well, like integrated engineering or do 88. They make really good products as well. And I personally recommend a factory location intercooler. They seem to perform the best when it comes down to it. Now you could run a front mount intercooler is definitely easier to install uh, as opposed to having to remove basically the whole front end of the car to install a factory location one. The front mount will just kind of attach to the front bash bar of the car when you take the bumper off, which people do that. They still do a decent job, but they don't do a sufficient job like the factory intercooler does. Even though it is harder to install, it will give you the best performance benefits. That's something else that you guys need to do research on because price varies a lot depending on the intercooler brand that you choose or the setup that you go for. Going for a front mount intercooler, you're going to spend probably half the price than you would on a stock location one. So for example, the APR one, uh, basically will have like 800 to a thousand dollars, depending where you can find it. Do 88 is another 900 to a thousand. IE is another 900 to a thousand, somewhere in that range. Whereas you could get a front mount intercooler for probably four to $600. So there is a couple of hundred dollar price difference. But in my opinion, if you're trying to make the easiest power possible, which is what this video is about, you would go with a factory stock location upgraded intercooler that uh, would basically perform the best. And in my opinion, at least, uh, some of the best ones, like I mentioned before, APR is a good one, IE is a good one, Do88, Wagner, there's a good amount of brands out there. You just need to do the research and choose the proper one for your application. Now we're going to talk about your exhaust system. Basically, the only thing you need to make over 500 wheel horsepower is having some sort of aftermarket downpipe, whether that be catted or catless, you need to choose the best downpipe for your needs on your car. Now, there are a lot of companies right now that are offering 
tunes and turbo upgrades for stock downpipes. And yes, you could do that. A lot of companies are making off the shelf maps for that stuff. Some companies are doing custom tunes for that stuff and that's great, but you will never make as much power with the factory downpipe as you would with an aftermarket one. I'm currently running the CTS aftermarket downpipe. It's done really well. I've had it on the car for about two years now and I've put more than 10,000 miles on it and I've had no issues whatsoever, but there are a lot of other good downpipes as well, uh, such as IE. They have a really good uh, downpipe. Uh, track slag. That's another big one. Frank Mabo makes a really good downpipe for these cars as well. So my recommendation would be to definitely choose an aftermarket downpipe and not at all stay with the factory downpipe if you're choosing to uh, try and make as much power as possible. So the factory downpipe is very restrictive and the factory exhaust is very restrictive. Now the good thing is replacing your downpipe, you really don't have to touch the rest of the exhaust. You don't really have to do a aftermarket cat pack. You don't really have to be deleting stuff to get more airflow as it would be nice to let the car and the turbo breathe a little more. It's not 100% necessary to make over 500 wheel horsepower. So you need to do an aftermarket downpipe, find the proper things out there on the internet to choose the one that will work best for you and in the price point that works best for you as well. The last thing that we're gonna talk about guys is tuning. Tuning is one of the most important things as well that you need to choose. There are so many different companies out there that tune these cars and you need to choose basically the best tuner that you feel would do the best job on your setup and who has the best reputation and best tunes and all of that. Currently, I'm tuned by EQT, as everybody knows. I rave about the company just because their products are really good, their software is really good, their customer service is really good, so I've had a very good experience from EQT, but there are a lot of other companies that do really good tuning as well. United Motorsports is a really good company. They also offer Flex Fuel, which is awesome. You have Sneaky Tune, which is another company that does tuning. Um, Integrated Engineering is another big company. So I would say that those are the four biggest companies that are doing tuning for this platform at the moment. Now, it's just your job to go out there and ask questions and do the research to choose who the best tuner is gonna be for you. If you're gonna ask me, I'm gonna recommend EQT before because when I tuned my Audi S3, I searched for a couple of weeks and I asked a lot of questions and ultimately it came down to United Motorsports and EQT and I ended up going EQT because of the uh, great customer service. I saw a lot of dynographs, a lot of people raved about them. They had a really good reputation in the community. So I thought it would be the best option for myself. If you don't have a good tuner, you're not going to make the proper power. They're not going to know what to do, and they're going to give you a very mediocre tune at best. So you need to make sure that you're going with the proper tuner for your setup. So again, I would also recommend running ethanol because the type of fuel that you run is very important. And basically at that point, it's just the competition of the top dogs in the industry. Uh, basically just choosing what person is going to tune your car on E85 and basically making the power that you want to make on your setup. So tuning again is very important and Basically, with the setup that you're running, just ask questions, send emails, DMs to people in groups, and just ask them about their setups and see who did what and what the best job is. And then from there, you can make basically the decision on who you're gonna go with and for what reasons. And I'm sure that if you do the research and you do things properly, you will be happy with the end result after you get your tune done. So that's gonna conclude the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As you see, I didn't include a lot of parts that I have on my car because it's stuff that really isn't necessary on high horsepower applications. For example, I didn't recommend you an intake because to be honest, the factory intake is sufficient enough to actually make over 500 wheel horsepower. And so is the factory cat pack on these cars, believe it or not. So I don't want to recommend something that you guys are really not going to need. If you guys are on a budget and you're trying to make big power, I want to just recommend to you guys the things that you need to do to make that power goal without having to go extra. Now, yes, an intake is nice to have. It makes really good noises. It gives you a little bit better throttle response, but you technically don't need it. And it's not necessary to make that kind of power. Same thing with the cat pack exhaust and all of that stuff. So that's the reason why I didn't recommend it in this video. Are they mods that you should do? Probably. It makes the car more enjoyable. It makes the car more fun. They look really nice and they sound good, but you ultimately don't need it. But if you guys have any questions, please let me know down in the comments below. I'm happy to help anybody out. And hopefully this video is a good guide on what to do if you're trying to make big power on your MQB car. But please guys, like, comment, and subscribe to let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good day.